Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily, but you can call me Ems. As you can see right up there, we are talking about everything I made in 2023. Knit, crochet, embroidery, sewing. We're talking about it all. Now, I definitely didn't do as many projects this year, but I did more larger projects compared to last year's makes. Because last year I did a lot of like I had a lot of small things like socks and mittens and fingerless gloves and that sort of thing. This year I'm a lot more sweater, etc. heavy. So let's jump right into it. First thing that I made this year, these are also not technically in order. The first couple are, I based it on my Instagram feed as well as my DIY and creative projects album on Facebook. I've merged them together. This is what we have. So the first thing I have is this Karen crocheted ruffled shawl. So this is a shawl that was displayed on the pa on the uh, label of Karen Cinnamon Swirl Cakes. This is the colorway Beach Towel. The Karen Cinnamon Swirl Cakes, I believe, are a Michaels exclusive, so not available on Yarnspirations, but the patterns are available on Yarnspirations. So this one is, I think this was part of their limited release of cinnamon swirl cakes. The thing with the cinnamon swirl cakes is they say that they're completely limited release, but, or like limited edition or limited run, but they've kind of been here all year. I've been working with this yarn all year, working on my uh, crocheted blanket project, the stitch and screen blanket. I'm still in the middle of that. I'm still way back on August square. So honestly, this will probably be a project that goes into 2024, but I'm okay with that because it's a little side project that I do when I want something easy to carry around or take out with me. So the ruffled shawl here, it came out a little bit small for my liking and I use it mostly to like line the bottom of my office chair at my office because at the office I have a second chair that is like a pleather material and I find it really cold in the morning especially in the winter so I've layered this on my chair and of course featuring Vecna <laughs> my little guy up there and by little guy I mean is my 20 pound cat he's huge next is my SCA garb I'm calling it SCA garb 1.0 because it's my first fully wearable outfit for the Society for Creative Anachronism. The Society for Creative Anachronism, if you didn't know, is kind of an educational nonprofit, but also a little bit of just like a hobby thing. It's like living history. It's like historical reenactment, but the anachronist part comes from that it is all of history pre-16th century. So 16th century and before, so anything 1500s and earlier, fair game in the SCA. Uh, it's mostly medieval, but you can go as far back as we have documentation for anything. So it's a really fun hobby, especially if you're really into history or uh, especially societal history and the way people interacted together and arts and sciences, martial arts, especially medieval martial arts. All of these things come together to form the Society for Creative Anachronism. So I created my first outfit. My intention is to have a 14th century or like a 14th century to 15th century Irish persona, but I am not ready to sew those clothes yet. So I made the simplest clothes, the simplest outfit that can get me out to events. And that is the classic Sakhar and Hangarok. So the soccer is the dress. It's literally the same from like so many places because cloth used to be very, very expensive. So they didn't want to waste any of it. So this whole, the, the kind of green brown kind of toned dress is made entirely of rectangles and triangles. And the triangles are made from just like cutting a rectangle up the bias. It's not fancy by any means, but it actually makes a really comfortable dress it fits really well they did the same style for tunics as well just the dress is obviously floor length and i have a white underdress which is linen 
I have a brown and green cotton linen blend dress. And then the hangarok or apron dress was an orange cotton linen fabric. And then you can accessorize it with a string of beads across the hangarok and you can hang your accessories, your tools, what have you off of it. And this picture is actually really fun. This is my first time doing thrown weapons and I think I may have found my favorite um, martial activity in the SCA, throwing axes and throwing knives. So I'd love to get my hands on some axes like these. These were actually super fun to use. I was lent them during the event to play around with them. I'm hoping that maybe I can enter a competition someday, maybe even next year, just, just for fun. <laughs> Because honestly, it was super fun. As you saw, like, see, that was like only my second time throwing and I got pretty close to the bullseye. I think I was doing pretty good for my first time. And super fun. As you can see, I was having a great time. Next up is my Jeepers jersey. So this was a pattern test for Lydia Morrow from At What Lydia Made. This was so fun. This was probably my longest test knit I've ever done. It is obviously a vintage inspired cycling jersey. So it is sleeveless and it has a really nice little zip up here. This is my first time sewing a zipper into my own knits. The sewing job on the zipper is not great. It doesn't look nice, but it's functional. And it's mainly because sewing through knitting is hard because I'm used to sewing to make the stitches even and beautiful. Whereas with knitting, you need to catch the loops of your knitting, which are much farther apart. So the inside looks a total mess, but it is strong and it is in there and it's held. So this was done in opal sock and woola, uh, which was in neon green, then cascade heritage sock in white and highlighter purple. And I need to unpick the bind off of the armholes because I bound off way too tight. It is really uncomfortable uh, right here. It kind of is a tight and it makes me feel a little pinchy when I wear it now. So I need to unpick that and do the bind off all over again. I don't really want to do it, but I'm going to have to. And that's going to be on my list of things to do in 2024. Next is this crochet lace collar. The pattern is by Lunar Still Gothic. It is done in Aunt Lydia's classic crochet cotton in size 10 uh, in the color natural. So it's just, it's not the bright white. It's that slightly off white color, not quite a crew. And it's very cute and I want to remake it in a number 30 cotton because this pattern is done as it just needs to be a certain number of repeats wide so you can make it as wide as you want so it fits your own neck. And one of the ladies from my local knit night gifted me some of her old number 30 cotton so I'm excited to give that a shot. If you didn't know, number 10 is one of the thinnest cottons you can get in stores right now but number 30 cotton was much more popular previously and it's even thinner than number 10 but not quite as thin as like a sewing thread. Then I have the unpolished skirt. This was a crochet test for Hunza Design. This was done in Rico Design Superba Hottest Socks Ever <laughs> held together with cow's yarn organic soft merino in the color Mysterious which is like this kind of off black charcoal-y color. And the fake I-cord edging was leftover opal, <laughs> not opa, opal sock and woola from my Jeepers jersey. Because this neon green was kind of, as you can see in the skirt, it was featured in the hottest socks ever. So I kind of marled these together to make this skirt. The yarns in this, other than the leftover opal sock and woola, were gifted for the purpose of the crochet test by Hunza. Then we have the box and vest, which is also a crochet test for Hunza Design. Get used to me saying that because I'm probably going to test a lot of things for her in the future. So this is a side tied vest with a fun knit look crochet stitch. This is done in Cascade Luminosa in the color Sunstone. And I got this on sale because it was being discontinued. And you can see my affiliate link below in the description if you want to get this pattern or any of Moa's patterns on Hunza Design. And anything that you purchase on her website, I might get a little kickback from that for my affiliate link, as affiliate links work. <laughs> Next is my Waffles on Sunday cowl. 
So Waffles on Sunday is my own design, my very first knitting pattern, and you can get it now on Ravelry. It is Briggs and Little Heritage in gold that I've done it in. And in the photo, it's folded. This is the size large. Thanks to my wonderful testers, I was able to come up with a couple other sizes. So now we have a small, medium, and large because it is a simple pattern and it is just a cowl. It's an accessory piece. I only did it in three, pa in three sizes. But I would like to, in future, offer a wide range of sizes if I ever make garments because I aim to be a size-inclusive designer. Obviously, I'm plus size, so at least my size would be included. So the part where I'm going to struggle is making smaller sizes. <laughs> How do I take my size and make it smaller versus my size and make it bigger is actually not that hard because I tend to be towards the top end of size ranges either the top or second or third from the top and that's in people who are considered size inclusive because a lot of knitting patterns I actually don't fit and that's just the way the cookie crumbles unfortunately but I think that the conversation we're having around uh, size inclusivity in knitting is very important to have because grading is a very difficult skill it is something that you need to be very skilled at to do it correctly and changing things when you're just an average knitter is very difficult. And that is why as a knitwear designer, if you're being a knitwear designer, you really should know how to do these things because it's becoming part of your job for especially the big designers where that is their main thing they're doing <laughs> for their job, I mean. Next was this little embroidery kit that my mom bought. She bought the embroidery kit because she really liked the image and she wanted to hang it up in her house and wanted me to embroider it for her. It was super easy, a very fast make. It probably took me maybe two days and that's because I wasn't really focusing on it. I just kind of did it on my lunch breaks and it took me maybe two days. It was great. It's, it's very cute. Uh, obviously the cat plant pot and floor were already uh, printed on. And there was also a very, very faint outline of the other items that you can follow along. So if you want to learn how to embroider or get a kit like this. Next is the holiday slipover. This pattern is by Petite Knit, but <laughs> back to our conversation on size inclusivity, upon finding out some of the things that she has said in the past about size inclusivity and that sort of thing, like this, the sort of things that I've now found out that she has said and discussed about size inclusivity is not somebody that I want to support, a even though, yes, she is p releasing her new patterns with an extended size range. I have found out that they're not well graded into the large sizes, um, as opposed to what I originally thought was a holiday slipover because I thought it fit exactly as it was meant to be. But a lot of the things with the longer, with longer sleeves, for example, have really long arms, really weird shaping, just not working for plus size people. And <laughs> I'm not going to repeat the words that I've, I've now found out that she has said because I don't want anyone to come after me for slander or whatever. But I'm just saying it is going to be my personal choice that I am not going to support her anymore as a brand or as a pattern designer. And I will only be using the patterns that I currently have in my uh, pattern library that I've already purchased. That being the Sophie scarf, the holiday slipover, and I forgot that I did buy the Alice top pattern, but I don't think I will be using the Alice top because I can get other really nice, similar, simple tops from another designer who's more size inclusive. This is made in Loops and Threads Charisma, and I think I put black cherry, but I think it might be black raspberry. Um, I'm not 100% sure, and I don't have the <laughs> Uh, ball band anymore but I think it's black cherry or black raspberry and then continuing in theme we have the Sophie scarf again petite knit I'll not be supporting the shop anymore but again I'm gonna use the patterns that I have and probably not make them again after this year but I already own the pattern so we'll see uh, so I made this in typical Br typical Bliss's Princess Mononoke collection in the color Ashitaka and Iron Town marled together. So Ashitaka is the blue color and Iron Town is this kind of peachy pinky color. 
and I think they look really cute uh, marled together and it's a nice little accessory but you know simple little scarf next is the barley hat and this is the barley hat pattern by tin can knits it is a free knitting pattern in their learn to knit series and I made it way too big uh, the joke here is that you aren't really a knitter unless you've made a hat that's way too big right uh, because I definitely made it way too big and I think it's because I added the mohair it bulked things out just enough that it made it too big so this was done in Briggs and Little Heritage in gold and lichen and lace marsh mohair and sweet potato the hat actually doesn't look bad on I was just intending it to be a more fitted to my head hat and it came out a little slouchy and it doesn't look bad it's just not my intended fit and next is the holiday slip over again this one uh, you know, really hammering it home here uh, pattern by petite knit but I will not be using I will only be using patterns I own going forward not purchasing any new patterns so my mom saw my holiday slip over and she really liked it and I showed her some of the other photos of make of makers who've made it and she really liked it in white so I made it for her for Christmas and I made it in loops and threads charisma and cream the reason I've chosen to go with loops and threads again is that it's very affordable as a yarn and the acrylic means that my mom can throw it in the washer and then just lay it flat to dry and it'll keep its shape and look fine and I haven't seen her wear it yet but I think she likes it to be fair it's December 27th and I gave it to her two days ago so there you go and then we have the crown jewel of my makes this year the Montmartre jumper from Fable Knitwear oh oh I love her so I started this in November of 2022 and I finally finished it in September of 2023. I had set it aside for almost the entirety of the summer and the spring and summer months because I was done with this pattern for a bit and not the pattern was bad, but I was just like, it's a heavier wool jumper. I don't want to be knitting right now with this. So I went and I knitted my, my, my other stuff that you've seen. So this has kind of been in the background between knits, that sort of thing. And then I made a real push to finish it in September and I did it. Uh, yeah. So this is Briggs and Little Sport in brown, heather, gold, and rust. It is the perfect, just 1890 style cycling sweater. Oh, love it to death. Fable Knitwear is really sweet. She turns out to be the sweetest little human being ever because I reached out to her because I saw in her Ravelry it only went up to size 3x and based on her pattern grading I would have been a size 4x but it said on there if you are a larger size email me because I did not get that those sizes tested and I would like to give you the pattern for free and you can give me your feedback so I did that and honestly the pattern was perfectly fine all the measurements made sense I did make the upper part of the sleeve shorter for my own personal preference I didn't want it folding over a lot so I just wanted the puff come down at the arm and then have the tight sleeve and that's what I did and uh, honestly crown jewel best thing I made all year <laughs> I love it so much then we have the Tolland sweater. This is actually my most recent finish. This was, again, a crochet test for Hunsa Design. If you see a pattern here. This is in Lang Yarns Cloud in color 1077. This uses the same stitch pattern as the Boxin Vest, but it, this is a customizable sweater. So I made the regular length body with regular length sleeves with no slit. So you can have regular or cropped body, regular or extended sleeve, and slit or no slit. And you can kind of mix and match those. I will say I made this with the regular sleeves, but unfortunately they stretched way too much while blocking. And that's just because I let the sleeve hang when I pu pulled it out of the sink while it was still wet. And it dragged it down so much with the weight of the water. So be very, very careful if you're using this pattern, using the same yarn, or a similar type of yarn and you're blocking it wet <laughs> be very careful to not stretch it that's all I'm saying 
Then we have the Cordelia Classic Jumper. This is a made to measure crochet pattern from Bee Leaf Crafts. And I was one of her pattern testers to make sure that all of the, it's one of those patterns where you get a, uh, you get a spreadsheet and then you put in your measurements and you put in your gauge swatch information and it spits out the numbers for you of how many stitches and how many rows and all that. So this is my first time using this sort of pattern. This is not released yet. It'll be released sometime in the new year. So follow Bee Leap Crafts on Instagram to see when it will be released. But yeah, I'm not sure this is my favorite way of doing a crochet pattern, but I understand the appeal for people. But the spreadsheet just didn't work for my brain. I used scraps of Briggs & Little Heritage from past projects and friend stashes and a couple of mini skeins I had. I've got some hand dyed Briggs & Little in there from some friends and it gives total crop sweater in an 80s movie where I'm dancing vibe, like I'm going to dance class. That's the vibe I'm getting from it and it's kind of cute and really nice to just like pop on when you want a little extra warmth. Next is Easy Sweater. <laughs> easy Sweater, pattern from Yarnspirations, done on Patton's Alpaca Blend in Black Cherry. So this yarn was gifted from a Knit Night Friends stash. She had exactly enough to make this size of a sweater. Exactly enough. Oh, beauty is beauty. Yes, so this easy sweater pattern on Yarnspirations, you can find it if you look up in their pattern directory for Patton's Alpaca Blend, because that pattern was made specifically for this. It is knit flat in panels, so one for the front, one for the back, two for the sleeves. Then you sew it together. This was a birthday gift for Jay, who is pictured right over there, wearing the sweater. I think it looks pretty darn good. New skills? Yes, please. Now, you cannot keep a fiber fiend away from the fiber crafts. So let's talk a little bit about new skills that I've learned this year. Spindle spinning. I learned to spin on a spindle. Thank you to oh, Jillian Eve FA on Instagram, YouTube, all of those things. Evie is one, sweetest little human being you ever did meet, and two, great teacher. So I learned spinning on a spindle first this year, and I got my drop spindle and Malobrigo Cloud. I don't recommend learning on Malobrigo Cloud. Beautiful fiber, it's merino wool, but I don't recommend merino for beginners because it's very slippery and doesn't want to stick to itself. So. That was my first attempt at spinning up there. As you can see, I started out in that mi top middle picture. I started out a little thick and thin. And then the top right, right, it got better. It did get better. Not amazing. And when I tried to ply this, I ended up with a knot. So I just now have a beautiful pile of knot that I have that is my first spin. But my second spin turned out a lot better, and that is the one on the bottom row. So this is a just literally a bag of undefined fiber from Briggs and & Little. And it's great. It wanted to stick to, to itself, and it was great for a woolen spin. I believe it's called a woolen spin because a worsted spin is done with combed fibers that are all running the same direction and a woolen spin is done with fibers that are going in all different directions. As you can see from that bottom left-hand photo, sorry, over there, it, I did so much better, so much better. Like that cob is beautiful. I'm just looking at the photo now and oh, I'm great at what I do. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Now bottom middle, that is when I uh, plied it together. I plied it with a center pull ball and it worked so much better this time because the first time I plied it with a center pull ball I broke my ball winder and it messed up the ball which is why I ended up with a knot 
And then, of course, I skeined it up, well, hanked it up, rather. I did it up into a hank, and it's already been knitted into a project, which we'll talk about next year, because it's going to be a next year project. Oh, oh, oh. And then, of course, I had to get a spinning wheel. Are you kidding? <laughs> I found a vintage 1970s Ashford traditional on Kijiji, of all places, for a pretty decent price, if you ask me. And it was in very good condition, very well taken care of. And the only thing was I had to replace the drive band, which I've actually been using uh, Premier Cotton Fair from Premier Yarns. And I just whacked that and I'm using that as my drive band. And it's really easy to replace if it snaps or if it gets too loose, it's super easy. So I've just been using that and it's worked out really well. So as you can see all around you there is just some different attempts at spinning on the spinning wheel. It is definitely a different skill than spinning on a spindle. Evie of Jillian Eve FA says it a lot is that spindle spinning is not spinning for beginners and that you don't start with a spindle so that you can learn spinning on a wheel. If you really want to spin on a wheel, get a wheel. They're completely different skills. Yes, it's to do the same thing, to spin yarn and then ply it together, but they are completely different. You're using your hands incredibly differently and just everything is moving so much differently. It's way faster on a spinning wheel, so your drafting is much faster, but you're drafting with two hands, not just controlling your spindle in one and then kind of drafting in like a one and a half hands is the way I kind of think of it. So different, but I love the spinning wheel. <laughs> there she is, my beauty, my darling girl. I love her very much. So definitely recommend picking up spinning if you're interested. Not to, like, force you into, like, a 17th craft or anything. <laughs> and last, but certainly not least, I want to talk a little bit about something I learned at our recent SCA Scola event in November, and that was dip pen calligraphy and illumination. This was so fun! I'm just, like, blown away at how fun this was! I never got the hang of dip pens, but this was so easy. Like, she was just like, you do this, you do this, you do this, da-da. And I was like, I was getting through like a whole line without needing to re-dip my pen. And last time I did dip pen calligraphy, I had to like re-dip my pen like every letter. So I don't know what's happening, but maybe it just finally stuck in my little, my little noggin. But it worked. And I'm especially <laughs> pleased with my illumination. So we have a really beautiful L for the Shire of Linda Haven. We have some acorns, we have some strawberries, we have a thistle, and this is kind of representing four different kinds of illumination, and I am absolutely in love. I think my favorite, though, is the one with the L, because it's a lot of blue, red, white work, gold. It's very simple, and I just think it looks so sweet, and I love it, and I just need to do more of it, and I think this just means that I have to start taking on doing award scrolls. That's just what it means. That's just how it works. But thank you guys so much for joining me today. And I hope you had a good time looking at all the things that I made in 2023. What did you make this year? Let me know down below. I love you, love you, love you lots. Bye, everyone. And Happy New Year.